Hi, I'm Alexandra Barker. Welcome to another edition of Relief Beyond Belief, Exploring the World of Natural Healing. Today we're going to be discussing hypnotherapy, and my guest today is certified hypnotherapist Kim Nellis, who's going to teach us all about it. Welcome to the show, Kim. Thank you. Nice to have yeah. you here. Happy to be here. So you're a hypnotherapist. Yes. <laughs> How long have you been doing that? Uh, I'm thinking about four years now. Yeah, I graduated four years ago in Toronto with the Ontario Hypnosis Center, and uh, been doing it ever since. So you probably have graduated. Yeah. lots of experience mm -hmm. in it that you can share with us. Um, I'm just wondering, and I'm sure our, our viewers are as well, what draws somebody to want to be a hypnotherapist in the first place? Uh, well, my background is acting, so it's really a real veer off from that. Um, I had children, and uh, like a lot of people, it, uh, having children was just a completely life-altering experience. Everything shifted, and uh, I'd been walking a, a path of alternative healing for a long time, but once I got to uh, having children, my acting career just, uh, it didn't feel right anymore, and uh, I didn't get to the uh, to the stage where I could have kept going in an exciting way. So I wanted to have more control over my life. So I was looking for a career change. And a very close friend of mine, um, her best friend runs the Ontario Hypnosis Center. So I found myself every time I would be at a party at her house, at the end of the night I would always be beside Georgina. Tell me more, tell me more, you know. And uh, so when I was looking for a job, my friend suggested that I talk to Georgina because she was looking for a secretary. And when I went and spoke to her, I realized I did not want to be a secretary. <laughs> I wanted to do what she did. So she said, you need to come take the course. So instead of coming home with a job, I came home and said, I need some money, honey. <laughs> <laughs> I want to take a course. And uh, so that's how it started. And it was just, uh, just a perfect fit ever since. I've always been intrigued by the idea that we are completely capable of uh, changing anything within ourselves and our minds. And that so much of it is just about a, a, a shift, a change of perspective. And really? that it can be a word or a one event in somebody's life and if it can be that impacting uh, in the negative sense then shifting it can can create an equally positive uh, you know in the really opposite of that yeah open some doors for people oh that's so, that yeah, is great it's just been a great great thing so it's not necessarily the, what many people will be familiar with, um, you know, the, the shows that are basically hypnosis for entertainment purposes. No, where you have people that, on a stage yeah, and you're like, a lot okay, of you're on a roller coaster. It. You know, it's not about that. No, really. it's not. Not what you do anyway. You're more about in a therapeutic In a therapeutic way. And, um, yeah, it's funny because my instructor um, also teaches a course in a stage hypnosis and it's very oh. successful. and. You know, it's a, it's very ethical. She does a teaches a very ethical side of it that it's not about humiliating people or making them do ridiculous things on stage, but it's about showing that the power of hypnosis to, you know, broader audiences. But and she just figured that with my acting background that I would naturally gravitate towards that kind of thing. But I, I said no, I'm not looking for that. I'm looking for the one on one or a group uh, therapeutic thing, and yeah, I really don't want helping. it to be. Uh, I. I you know, I too watched, we, we had Mike Mandel come to our high school and stuff like that, and I, it was a laugh, it's funny, it's, it's great, but unfortunately it, I think, um, prohibits some people from coming forward um, to do it for a therapeutic reason, because they think they're going to be made to do something. I, I can't tell you how many times people have said, you're not going to make me quack like a duck or bark like a dog, <laughs> are you? Like, no, not unless you really want me to. But really, so. isn't it uh, people really won't do anything under when they're under the hypnosis that they wouldn't normally do? Uh, no, and nothing counter not. to their values. No, or and in fact, anything. people often, uh, if there's any resistance to anything that I'm saying, people will often just immediately bring themselves out and say, you know, I actually, I, you know, I don't like that, or uh, I don't really want to go there, or something like that. I've done age regression before, where um, we've landed on a an age that I haven't conferred with the person ahead of time to say, is 16, is there anything about 16 that you want to avoid, or 15, or whatever, a certain age, and then we've gone there. It's only happened a couple of times because I've learned my lesson, <laughs> but uh, I've brought them back and they've said, actually, I have no happy memories from being 16, so can we not use 16? And then I'll say, okay, absolutely, so just you know, relax again and they can go right back. Oh. into hypnosis. So there's, a, there, there's an idea when you're first starting, when I'm first starting anyway, that people uh, are often afraid to scratch their nose or get a drink of water if they're coughing because they think it's going to break the spell. 
and there's no spell. It's just, it's really a meditative, as you know from yoga, it's a, a meditative state, and it's, uh, you can come in and out. And, and so, we do throughout yeah, the course absolutely. of our daily lives, and, right. and as well as animals. Mm -hmm. Also, for many animals, slip into, a, it's really um, akin to daydream, isn't absolutely. it? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, and highway hypnosis is the example we use for people that quite um, often, you know, you're on the highway and somebody says, you know, how oh, is traffic on the 401? And you go, don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Don't remember getting from A to B. I know I got there, and, and you were obviously conscious enough that if something, you know, had happened, you could have become alert, but you were just in that so It's that automatic state. pilot. Absolutely. Sort of, so yeah, it's just I'm basically, I tell people, it's basically subduing your conscious mind enough to bring the subconscious mind up to the forefront to receive suggestions. So that's, that's pretty much the explanation for it. So you would do, like, um, if someone were to come to you, for the first time, mm -hmm. let's see what what sort of things would someone expect. I guess it would depend what they were coming for. Yeah, it depends what they're coming for. So, it, for I, I get a lot of smokers. I get a lot of people coming in for weight. So those are the two main things that people mm -hmm. come in for. I do a lot of phobias, um, and uh, so for the phobia, it's pretty much I get them. Uh, I talk to them over the phone about making a list. Okay, so say it's a, a fear of flying. I get them to make a list. One to ten. One being worst case scenario. One being there's turbulence and the pilot is saying, put your head between your knees. That's like, okay, that's their worst case scenario. That's number one. Number two is the stewardess comes on and says, can everyone return to their seats, please? We're experiencing some turbulence. Number three is maybe there's turbulence. You know, and work your way down to a list of ten can, involving this, ten being the lesser. Mm -hmm. oh. Ten being, your husband tells you he has tickets to Jamaica and you're going. That's the beginning of the anxiety of it. And then the next is the day before you're leaving or whatever. So I get them to make a list of ten. And so when they come in, they have that list ready. We go through it. Then we uh, go through uh, the history. We do a lot of history. Okay, have you always had this fear? No, actually, it was just a one bad plane ride that I had when I was 17. Okay, tell me more about that year. Well, my mother died that year. Okay, highlight. <laughs> you know, it's significant. Yeah. So there's some links being made to the bad year, the bad plane ride, all of that stuff. Mortality, the idea that her mortality, oh, that kind of yeah. thing. This is just one example. Yeah. So, um, and then we do a lot of intake, and then we do, um, I get them to uh, describe for me a, a special place, a peaceful, relaxing place where they feel safe. And this can be a place in their imagination or a place that they've been to or a combination of both. So it's cottage when I was a kid, but there's nobody there and it's a perfect day. And I get them to describe it in as much detail so that it's their words because there's a, a lot of impact um, from hearing their words coming back through somebody else's voice. So then um, get them to ask about, you know, their fears of hypnosis. And so by the time we start, they're pretty relaxed to begin with. We've done, I've done a lot of just uh, uh, championing of, of hypnosis in a subliminal way of just this absolutely works and it can work in one session. And, you know, if you have to come back, it's fine and I can make you a tape and, and the reassuring stuff. Mm -hmm. And then I do suggestibility tests. And that's, this is one of them with the pendulum here. Um, and it's called Chevrel's pen Pendulum Experiment. And so um, I would get them, do you want to try it? Sure. What do I do? Okay, I so don't just. have a lot of luck with pendulums. That's okay. <laughs> you don't <laughs> we'll need to. We'll see what happens. Um, okay, so just with it, yeah, right over the center. Okay. Just focus on it for a moment and then notice that, that there are some letters around it, A, C, B, and D, mm -hmm. around the outside. So just with your eyes, just um, start to go back and forth with your eyes between A and B, back and forth from A to B from A to B, and you can just see the A and the B going back oh, and forth from A to B. Good, and now just shift focus for a moment and just look at the letters C and D, and you can just see the letters C and D, and you can just see the letters C and D back and forth, up and down from C to D, from C to D. Good.
Okay. Wow, it just stopped though. It didn't start it did, going this but way. But that's fine. But all this ends up for me showing me is is how suggestible to you, you are. So oh. at the beginning you were, and then your mind got involved, and so you stopped being as suggestible. Oh, so I, I would lock there. Probably. <laughs> well, it would just means that you know that. At but first that's the first time I've even gotten that much of a. You know, usually they just stop, and that's it. Oh yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, then that would just suggest to me which script I would use, which oh. relaxation induction or um, blackboard induction that's a little bit more complex. It keeps somebody's mind a little more occupied so that for the, um, not so much the skeptics, because I don't want to say that, because people who come are obviously willing. Mm -hmm. You know, people want to, if they're coming to you and going to pay you money, that they want, yeah. want it to work, yeah. but there could be some resistance that they're not aware of, or they could be just the kind of person that's just constantly thinking too much. So do you think about it. that's the case with me? Um, what, probably, that at first, you know, at first there was more willingness and then there was some questions came in, a little skepticism maybe, or a little resistance, or a little of your own oh, not consciously, um, control. Though. No, absolutely, but then <gasps> it just suggests to me which, which would be a better um, induction for you. So I could be hypnotized? Yes, I would, I would say yes. And before, um, but didn't seem to go terribly deeply. Right, so. and that's another misconception, I think, that people yeah, have. Yeah, I wanted to talk a little bit about that. So when you're hypnotized, you're not going to be like, you're out there in la-la land somewhere, necessarily. No. Um, so you would still be aware of your surroundings, mm -hmm. and yeah, maybe completely. even aware of your, you know, the sound of your own voice, and everything might feel quite normal. Absolutely, and a lot of people, I, I, I find, are really surprised. They expect to be like, hey, what happened? What they do, yeah, yeah. you know, when they come up, and that it's going to be again. Something I think they that's don't from remember. watching those shows. It is. It's Bugs Bunny, and the, you know, the thing, and the, you know, uh, yeah. all of the old, uh, old stigmas and old uh, stories and myth around hypnosis. I think that is even. It's funny because my kids and I read the Lemony Snicket books, and we're on book number four, and and uh, it involves a. Um, an evil hypnotist named Dr. Georgina Orwell, <laughs> and it's funny because my instructor is Dr. Georgina Cannon, and I haven't told her yet that there's an evil hypnotist who, you know, tries to kill the children in Lemony Snicket. And uh, but again, it's 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 the idea that somehow someone can, you know, have that much mind control over you through hypnosis, which is not true. And um, so yes, you don't have to be at a very deep levels, especially to elicit any kind of change for smoking, for weight, for phobias. It really is just the initial stages that you need to be under. Doing what really brings people to you? Is it primarily the uh, looking to lose weight or stop smoking or break any other bad habits? Yeah, like that? that's what I'm finding the most. It's uh, I thought I'd see more stress. I did in Toronto when I was working in Toronto. Of course, there was more stress. Uh, yeah. People coming to me for stress. Um, and I, I'm seeing that um, I'm starting to talk to a lot more mothers about it because I, I, do, I use this with my kids a lot at bedtime. And yeah. my husband says, you know, this is the thing. This is the thing that everybody wants is this thing you do oh. with kids at night. So you sort of put the suggestion to them yeah, that them. you're go, good and sleepy. <laughs> and the thing is they say it so easily. Yeah, they just, you know, my, my daughter has a little Barbie light actually. It's a star. And, when you push the bottom, it lights up, and so that's what she focuses on. And I get just pointed above, and she's already told me what her safe place is exactly. You know, my son's is a is from one of his video games. It's like a Yoshi Island, and there's little Yoshis jumping. And I mean, I have no idea, but it's his thing, so that's what we use for him, and that makes him feel safe and relaxed. And so basically, uh, my daughter's is like a place with unicorns and rainbows and little trickling streams and hammocks and. Hmm. So yeah, so it's great for that. So, uh, but I'm finding yes, yeah, a lot of people for weight and a lot of people for smoking. It's it works like a dream for smokers. It really it does. does for pack a day smokers. It's like boom, five sessions, you're done. Really? Yeah, wow. wean them down five at a time. I'm amazed because I thought I, I wasn't that interested in doing smokers. I was more interested in the phobias and the uh, age regression and, and yeah. that kind of stuff. But I realize it's not really about me. <laughs> <laughs> Funny how that works. <laughs> So do you see a good um, good result with the weight as well? Weight's more complicated. Yes, there's great results can be uh, can be achieved for weight, but people have to understand that, that weight is such a... I think people do. I mean, people come to hypnosis at the end of their road of weight 
stuff. Yeah. You know, like yeah. they've gone to Jenny Cray, they've gone to Weight Watchers, they've gone to a nutritionist, they've tried a personal therapist, they've blah, 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 blah. Hypnosis is kind of the last and stop. That's, yeah, that's and when you so discover all these other underlying absolutely. reasons why they're hanging on to the weight. That's right. And so it, yeah. it works in, in a really great way. It works in conjunction with other programs. I say to people, if you're involved with Weight Watchers and if you're, you know, going to a gym and doing this, great. You have a, a really strong chance of, of breaking the patterns and, and everything because so often it's just, I mean, it can be anything from sexual abuse. It can be from just, uh, you know, um, verbal abuse as a kid. You're a fat uh, nickname. I knew somebody whose nickname was Moose as a kid. Their father called them Moose. I mean, you know, it can be as simple as the family dynamic. Uh, I had a woman come in, there's three sisters, and her one sister was the skinny sister. Well, now her sister was overweight, and she found this woman that came in. She could only get to a certain weight, and she could never break past it. And that was because she couldn't be thinner than her thin sister. She uh -huh. had this funny, in her a mind, beliefs. a core belief, that, she would, that the thin sister always had to be thinner than her. And so once she just shifted that, it was amazing. It was just dropping off. And it, and it was not that much of a, a change in terms of what she was eating or exercising. I really, and the wording is everything. I don't call it weight loss. People have a, a really strong negative association with the word loss. Loss is about grieving. Oh, loss right. is about finding it again. Um, oh. You just reword it oh, and say it's releasing. Release. Yeah. And it's about... Permission. It's all about uh, willingness. It's all about choice. It's about freedom. It's it's not about bad dog. <laughs> Stop eating cookies. <laughs> uh, don't do this. You must do that. It's not about all of that. You know, being hit with a newspaper over the nose. It's really a permissive and um, cooperative thing. Well, I think uh, these techniques could be really helpful too, if it's for people who are working on you know, how we are creating our realities with mm -hmm. our every thought. And if you have some really deep grain negative thought mm -hmm. patterns, you know, it can take an awful lot too if you're slipping into it without even thinking That's about it. That's right. So I don't, what about something like that? Could people just use some Absolutely, of these Absolutely, as positive affirmations. There's a step one of self-hypnosis. I mean, when people come to see me, I teach them right away after the first session, they learn step one, which is a bedtime ritual, which is just a... a if you were to come to me, I'd say, so every night before going to sleep, um, you'll get into the position you do before going to sleep each night, and then just before going to sleep, you will say to yourself, every day in every way I get better and better, and then just imagine uh -huh. what that means to you. So everybody has a different idea of what that means, whether it be in terms of weight, whether that's picturing your ideal self in the, you know, the t-shirt tucked in with the tight jeans, you know, yeah. or whether that is uh, finishing a, a, a project, a book, a song, a something, a script, or whether it's um, not smoking, or whether it's getting on a plane and going to Jamaica, or you know, and so everybody's individual, but to to visualize it as strong strongly as you can and in as much detail as you can, counting off with each finger of your uh, left hand and then each finger of your right hand until you've said the suggestion ten times, at which point you'll be able to fall asleep easily. Oh, I'm gonna try that. So yeah. Yeah. And that just gets them, sets up a habit of properly programming yourself before sleep with a, in a positive way. And I've had so many people that come for weight or for smoking that end up saying, and you know what, I'm sleeping all night too. It's really weird. It's really helped with my sleeping. Oh. So there's that. It's, a, it's just because uh, absolutely you want to be self-sufficient. You want to be able to hypnotize yourself. By, the, by step three of self-hypnosis, you should be able to just anywhere you are, slip into another room or, you know, bathrooms are perfect for that because you get to lock the door, you know, for a, a mother of small children. It's yeah. the bathroom yeah. the only time <laughs> yeah. I get to escape. So. The only private place. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you can hypnotize yourself if you're in a difficult situation and do it for two or three minutes and then come out. Oh, awesome. Mm -hmm. Okay, and now we promised viewers a demo, so okay, here we go. So what should I do? Just sit Just, yeah, sit comfortably. I mean, when we were doing the class, we were under bright lights and in a very unrelaxed environment so it doesn't your environment does not make any difference I mean it's lovely if you can have the candles in the dimly lit room and the incense or aromatherapy but you don't need it so okay. so just um, yeah just start to relax and make sure your neck is comfortable the back of your chair it feels a little like preparing to meditate good <laughs> exactly and just breathe deeply good nice and slow 
and start to follow your breathing. Good, and start to feel your whole body relax from the top of your head to the tips of your toes. It should be like this because this is how I meditate. Good. Nice and relaxed. And imagine that your feet are, are going right down into the ground. There's a, there's a pole going right down through both feet, right down into the Earth's core, as if you're plugged in, plugged into the Earth's core. And all of the Earth's energy comes surging up through the floor, through the ground, into your feet, up through your legs, making you feel extremely grounded and comfortable and relaxed at the same time. You feel plugged in. And just reach your own level of personal relaxation. And in a moment I'm going to count from 1 to 10. And imagine that you're at the top of a staircase. You can unplug yourself now from the Earth's core. And just imagine that you're at the top of a staircase and try and picture the staircase in as much detail as you can. Has it got a wood railing or a metal railing? Is there carpet on the stairs? Are the stairs made of cement or wood? And in a moment, I'm going to count from 1 to 10, and you can imagine taking the steps down. And with each step you take down, just imagine that your relaxation is increased even more with each step down that you go. The top of the stairs, 10. Good. And relaxing even deeper, 9. Relaxing even deeper to still, eight and seven, even more relaxed, feeling so relaxed, arms feeling so heavy and so relaxed, seven, six, five, even more relaxed, four, three, two, and one, deeply relaxed, feeling so relaxed and so good. And just in, imagine for a moment that you're in your kitchen and you're going into the fridge and you're just going to pick out a nice juicy lemon, pick the lemon out and take it to the counter to the chopping block. And with a, a knife that can cut the lemon in half, you cut the lemon in half very safely. Cut the lemon in half and you can see the juice starting to spill over the counter onto the top of the cutting board. And then you'll cut it one more time into a quarter. And then you're going to pick that lemon up and just give it a little bite. Good. You can feel the juice spurting into your mouth. Your whole mouth is salivating now. Just so much juice, lemon, a little bit sour into your mouth. Good. And at the count of three, you'll open your eyes. One, two, and three. Eyes open, back in the room. Was <laughs> <laughs> the lemon. Definitely full. Of, definitely <laughs> salivated as soon as you said that. Yeah, I mm -hmm. could just. It's <laughs> a quick one. <laughs> I do it when I'm saying it. Sometimes it's funny. <laughs> oh, that's cool. So judging by that, then you would know how. Like, yes. Would that be the same? Would you have to take me deeper um, if you were working on? Absolutely, and and normally I would take take you much deeper, and it would be yeah. a much longer, longer induction. Yeah, process, it would be a full body relaxation, then it would be the stairs, and we would have already talked about your special place, which I would reiterate back to you, repeat back to you, once you're in you know, a state of hypnosis, and then we would probably do some depth testing, and that's where I find out whether you have eye lock or not, and I'll say to you that you cannot open your eyes. Um, and that's just basically for the person to see whether they are or aren't in hypnosis, but if it, a lot of people do open their eyes even when I say that they won't be able to, and it's just a testing. They're testing themselves, um, and quite often then when I get them to close their eyes, then they go even deeper because they've proven to themselves that they could if they wanted to, right. that I'm not completely in control of them, yeah, and then still in charge. they allow yeah. themselves to go. So, yeah, that's all the, the stuff that gets... Um, oh, 